What's up, everyone? My name is William, and I'm a diner guy. And you're listening to American Diner Stories, the podcast. We are actually creating a documentary. My film partner, Glenn, over here. Hello. All right, and I lovingly call him Producer Glenn. <laughs> Thank you. Because he is a producer. He's helping us create this ultimate uh, documentary, and now a podcast. Yes. My background is I'm a food and beverage photographer. I work with food brands and restaurants. And Glenn is diner royalty, so to speak. <laughs> His family has created diners. And uh, we wouldn't, like, we're talking about us. The first podcast is about, about us, but we really can't talk about us unless we talk about your family. Yeah, that's actually very true. Yeah. I met you through working with my, you know, through working with my family. I met you because you started to work there. And, yeah. uh, we cannot tell our story without telling the story of Clem Pappas. No, no, you're right. You can't. And Clem, Clem is uh, Glenn's grandfather. Yes. Is Papu? Is that my Papu? Right? Yeah, yeah, my Papu. It's Greek. Greek. So go ahead. Tell us a little something about uh, Clem. He was an immig- obviously he was an immigrant. He came here at 13 years old. He also worked in in diners. Let's say he went back to Greece in 1929, and his uncle, he said, was a doctor. I, you know, I don't know what kind of medical degree guy had, but he told him that if he didn't stop boxing, he would end up with brain damage. So when Papu came back, he focused on diners. He opened one called, with some partners, he opened one called the Wilson Diner. And then after a few years there, he separated with the partnerships, and he started the Boulevard Diner in North Bergen. He was a workaholic. He was a larger-than-life character. He really was. He was a legend in North Bergen and in the Hudson County area. Tell me about working with your grandpa. Working with Papu, wow. Um, he was a dynamo. He really was a um, good word, whirlwind. He was a whirlwind. Okay. He, he would... Now, work, working with him, uh, let's see. I was 15 years old, working as a busboy in North Bergen. And he would get to the house around 6.30 in the morning and just sit on the horn. My yayo would be sitting in the back seat. He, he let me sit in the front next to him. And he would pick me up. And we would drive to North Bergen. And we would get there at 7. And he was a world. He would just go into the kitchen and just start picking things up, cleaning things, you know, clapping his hands, telling people to do things. Uh, you know, if, if the girls weren't back then, you could smoke in, in the diners. And if the... Uh, and back then, all the servers were women. So when I say the girl, you know, he would walk into, walk through the kitchen, walk through this back, and if they were sitting there smoking, eh, don't smoke, don't smoke, and we have to take care of the customer, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And uh, he, he he was just a whirlwind. And then he would sit at the, my yaya would sit at the at the register, and he would be seating people, greeting people. He was, um, he really was a whirlwind. He was, he was just a ball of energy. Great guy. Great guy to watch. That, I mean, that doesn't make you a great human being. He was, but just as a professional, he was really a great, great guy to watch. Would you say you got all your work ethic from him? Absolutely, absolutely. Watching him, I got my work. I mean, abs- there's no question about it. Tell tell the story about you in the battleships because I love that story. Well, <laughs> that's. I mean, I wasn't working there. I was like five or six years old. Five years old. You know, he, he would pick me up. And I would have my little toy battleships. And behind um, the counter was a little bar area and there were little sinks. And I would, st- uh, I would put those little rubber stoppers into, into the drain. And I would have little <laughs> naval battles <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the sink. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool with my plastic ships. Yeah. I remember you telling me the story that when he would pick you up, then you would learn like all the business. Like he would give you all those business lessons while driving. Yeah, he, he would. Um, yeah, he would, business lessons, lessons on life. He would talk about the same stories over and over when he was young. Um, you know, you you got to memorize them by heart. You know, you, know you, you can actually start. You know, I would be able almost be able to mouth the words while he starts telling the stories <laughs> because he would he would say them over and over. But I treasure them now. I mean, I I treasured them then, but even now I'm older. I really treasure them. He he um he was he was a great guy. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Go ahead. I want to hear a funny like, story. Of, of kind of like high energy. We were, he picks me up. We're, we're on the road. And uh, there was a guy walking with his dog. And I can't remember if it was because Papu got too close to him or the guy got too close to Papu. I can't remember. But 
in the rear view, he sees the guy flip him the bird. He slams on the brake. Oh, God. <laughs> I guess, and he's like in his seventies. He yeah. wanted to kick this guy's ass, and my guy was screaming, "Clem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't!" That's so funny. Like, Papu, what are you doing? Don't do this! Oh my god! <laughs> and then he drove off, and he was just, you know, he started cursing in Greek. And we <laughs> went to work. But that's the kind of dude he was. He, he he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't afraid for nothing. Yeah, yeah. No, I got gotcha. you. Now I have a question for you, Big W. Um. You know, we have a, a long working relationship, and um, you asked me to be a part of this documentary. But really, what I never asked you is why do you want to make a documentary on diners? I haven't asked you. I really don't know. Wow. Uh, the reason, you know, something, uh, the reason I really want to make a documentary about diners is it really goes back to the 80s, and me and my nana. In Connecticut, we'd go to Curly's Diner once in a while. And that, I think it was my first diner experience. And I just love the people there, like the front of the house. You, you, when, you, when you're a customer and you're eating, you see people. People are friendly. And I'm a people person, and I love that part. But when I actually, and I, and I was a corporate chef for many years, so I actually know the back of the house. But it wasn't until I worked for your family that I realized, and this is like, this is in 2015. This is when entrepreneurship, that word gets thrown around a lot. Yeah. And you see it. And, uh, and you hear it. And I realized that most of the restaurants in our area, and, and I live in Jersey City, and your family's uh, diner is in North Bergen on the border of Union City. There was a lot of these upstart restaurants mm -hmm. that uh, you talk about entrepreneurship and food trucks. It wasn't until I worked for your family that I saw the real entrepreneurs and how they built something for nothing. And in the basement, sitting next to Schmida. And the old diner menu, which I think is like 12 items. Mm -hmm. And I realized this is where all the young entrepreneurs of food business really should look. Because these are people that transitioned from a startup to an established business. Yeah. And there was a real story behind it. Like, I'm a people person. And I just loved looking at uh, Papu's, your, Clem's picture. Yeah. That's the one thing about your family. I think someone in your family is a photographer. Uh, yeah, um, my cousin Diana. Right, and I could, and, and me as a photographer, I love the pictures, and there's a rich history of pictures, and that's what. There's that one picture of Clem with his hand on his hips in the foyer. Yeah, and it sucked me in, and I want to know more about him, and that's why I would talk to your uncle Nicky yeah. about him, and then you, and then we'd work together about it. And you know, in that picture, he's only 32 years old. Yeah, he's only 32 years old. Yeah. He had that face that, that it it was not I want to say warm and inviting, but he had that moment in his eyes. Yeah, and that's what sucked me in, especially about your family and the journey. Nice. And I didn't know right then that I wanted to make a documentary about diners. I just love people and I love diners, and I think that it's a story that when I started to read a little bit more about the diner industry, yeah, that it set the hook in me, and I love I just love people. And I think another story that I love is when we did our research at the Four Star and you met Bill Anacasa, the owner of the Four Star. And he then told us the story from the former owner, how he knew your grandpa. And I like, that was like a aha moment. Like they knew each other and how yeah. they bought a diner at the same company, the PMC diner. Yeah. So for me, it's a history. I always think we're history lesson people. Now, would you agree that that same type of vibe exists in East Hanover? Yeah, 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 totally. The East, the Carstos family, amazing family. It, mm. The thing is, it's, our, our documentary is not about food. The podcast is not about how good your disco fries are. No. It's really how good you are as a family, as a business person, as welcoming people in the door. Because no one will go back to, I don't care how good your food is, if you're not friendly, I'm never going back. No, I and, agree. And that's the recipe for all diners. Yeah, yes it is. Yes, it is. It's uh, like I, I've said m many times that um, if the food is fantastic, but the I won't even say if the if if the food is fantastic, but the, you're treated rudely, you'll never go back. I don't care how good it is and how reasonable the price is, because there's especially in today's world, open the door. There's eight million places to go. You don't have to eat here, 
But if the food is, is good and you're treated like gold, you got a good shot of getting that customer to come back. What's the advantage that the diner has over a regular restaurant? Well, that you can have anything at any time, meaning you can come in at 9 in the morning and get a chicken franchise. You can come in at 9 at night and get uh, an avocado omelet. You can come in at lunch and get the uh, sandwich, you know, anything above. Anything goes. And one, one of the things that we in the diner, we take pride of is that we are there to serve the customers and whatever they want, they get, you know. And um, like I said, you can get pancakes at dinner. You can get uh, the, you can get lobster tails at breakfast if you want it. Uh, the kitchen is open and we're there to serve. All right, everyone. That's the end of our first podcast. I hope you had a good time and I hope we told a great story. So I'm signing off. I am William. Also known as the Big W. All right. And he's producer Glenn. I am producer Glenn G. Pappas. That's right. Until next time. Until next time. Remember, disco fries for all. Disco fries for all.